Hello everybody, my name is Rob Veal and I'm the head teacher of Atwood Primary Academy which is situated in Sandersted in South Croydon and it gives me absolutely great pleasure to welcome you to our specially prepared video which hopefully will guide you through the process of uh, transition for your children or child into either nursery or reception. So we have never done uh, a video before and uh, you will obviously note that uh, normally at this time of the year we hold a very special parents information evening uh, usually in mid-June uh, in which I normally stand up and welcome parents to our school sometimes uh, in the room there are parents who have got older children and so they know a little bit about our school and for others of you it might be the first time that uh, you've actually interacted with Atwood or indeed it might be the first time that you've interacted with a school since uh, your own, own schooling experience so uh, what I aim to do is try to put uh, everybody's mind at ease and uh, generally welcome you to our wonderful school and then of course I normally hand over to Mrs Standing who is the leader of the Early Years Foundation stage but of course because of the current situation we simply can't do this so we felt that we didn't want anyone to be anxious or miss out on important information and so we have prepared this film for you so it's in three sections there is this introduction from me, Rob, the head teacher. There is also the main body of the film, which is Mrs. Standing, uh, going through the presentation. And then there is uh, a little bit of a summary right at the end. But I wanted to say to you, please do not worry. I know how anxious you will be. If I'm honest, we're feeling a little anxious too, because uh, our traditional and well tried and well tested methods of transition which we feel are very successful uh, may not be able to follow uh, how they would normally follow at this time of year but I know that working as a team we will get it done and we will make sure that uh, your children or child have the very best possible start to Atwood and um, let you into a little secret you may already know this but we have our school motto which is nothing is impossible and this is going to be one of those cases so um, I'm going to sign off and uh, next in the video I'm going to be handing over to Mrs Standing thank you Good evening. For those of you who don't know you, don't know me, my name is Mrs Standing and I am the Early Years Foundation Stage Lead and also one of the Assistant Heads here at Atwood Primary Academy. The purpose of this PowerPoint is to kind of talk you through about your child's first few days at school. Hopefully by the end of this I will have introduced you to the Early Years Foundation Stage, which some of you might know a bit about already. I will explain about, a bit about how we assess your children within their time within both nursery and reception. I'll stress the importance of you as parents and I'll provide you some more information on your child's first few days at school. So the early years foundation stage is broken up into seven areas. Three of these are the prime areas which include personal social emotional development. So those are things like children working together, playing together, are they confident in their decisions they're making, are they becoming resilient. Physical development, so looking at those gross motor skills which the children need, especially within those, those early years where we need our children to be strong in their kind of upper arm strength so that then they can bring it down. So if they've got good shoulder movements, it then brings down to their elbow movements and then down into their wrist and fine motor skill movements so that they then become really able and proficient to write. But also health and self-care comes in with, with under that area. We've got communication and language. Um, which is a really key development point for our children. So being able to communicate with one another, um, their, their interests, their wants and their needs, but also understanding what others are saying. There are also what's called the specific areas. So this includes literacy, so your reading and writing skills and your phonics. Mathematics, so understanding about number, understanding what, what number is. And the shape, spatial measures, so understanding a bit about 
um, shape names, um, being able to describe them, and also understanding measure, so whether that's time, whether that's distance. Understanding the world, which is quite a big area, so looking at the world itself, um, can, do we know the differences between where we live compared to other areas? What do we like about where we live? Um, talking about our community and ourselves at home, um, what, what are our family traditions, for example? And technology, so looking at our IT, so whether it's use of iPads, whether it's use of B-bots within school, um, and also at home. And then the final one is expressive arts and design, so being imaginative, can they use their imagination in role play? Can they use it to make and build things? Can they do their art and design? Can they colour mix? So we look at all those seven areas across both nursery and in reception as well. Uh, this is what's called our kind of our, how we work the planning cycle for our children. So within early years, we do what's called ongoing formative assessment. So we are constantly observing your children and that's where the kind of process starts where we look and we listen and we make notes we describe what the children are doing and you'll see some of these notes as you go through on our tapestry which I'll talk about a bit later our, our learning journeys we then from those notes we make we look, talk as a team and we look at our, making assessments so where are the children at now and then we look at where are their next steps so what will we do for that individual child to make sure that they make next steps in their learning as you're probably very aware, every child has a different starting point and we spend, especially those first few weeks when they start with us in, in nursery or reception, we spend time getting to know your children, getting to know where, where their areas of strength are or maybe where those areas are which they need to work on and every child is so different. So this is one of the things we might be doing. So this is a, some children within nursery and they were doing some role play. What, do, what can you see in this picture? So this is what we'll be seeing. So we're looking and thinking, ah, oh, look, the children are negotiating with each other. They're beginning to share. They're beginning to follow our kind of our rules. They're communicating. But they, we might have introduced new vocabulary to do with the topic we're learning, and they're starting to use that. They're demonstrating coordination. So whether that's making doing the bandaging, um, do, and working out, do I need, do I have enough tape to kind of attach it? We might go as practitioners after observing, we might go in and we might take some books in and say, oh, let's find out more about that animal. Let's have a look at some information books. Let's expand their knowledge. So again, using their mathematical language, I need some more of that. How much more do I need? How am I going to find out? It's all about problem solving in the early years. And showing understanding of others um, and, and what other jobs are, what things are out in our community as well. And taking on roles, so role play is a, a really big key area within early years. So this picture shows us so many things and so many more things. And that's what we spend quite a lot of our time doing. I love this poem called Just Playing. Some of you might have heard of it before. And I think when you, you walk into an early year setting, whether it's a nursery or reception, a lot of times you might think, oh, the children are just playing. But actually, have a real look. What are they doing? And I always say, you know that your child has had a really good day within nursery or reception if they've come home dirty. They should have a bit of paint from when they were doing some maybe splatter painting. They should have some mud where they were digging in the mud kitchen. They should have a bit of their lunch down them so you know what they've eaten. If they've come home looking pristine, I would always question what learning's been going on today. So they could, they, and us as adults, often we come home looking exactly the same. Another thing we look at within the Early Years Foundation stage, stage is our, the characteristics of what is an effective learner. So we think about your children, we think about their engagement levels. How are they, are they willing to have a go? Are they being resilient? Do they give up easily? Do they keep on going? And that's what we really try to build in your children because these, these first few years within education, um, whether from birth up to five, is all about learning to be a learner. And that's what we want to instill in your children. Are they motivated at this active learning side? Are they involved? Are they concentrating? And you can really tell a child who's concentrating. You'll probably know from your own children, they might have their tongue out when they're doing that really intricate cutting or really intricate colouring. They're, they're not, they zone out with everything else and they can only focus in on what they're doing. Or do they keep trying? Do they give up? Do they, keep, they, do they persevere with what they're doing? And also it's about that intrinsic achievement. So do they... Are they happy with what they've done? Not because of an external reward, but because of they've made the progress that they want to make. And this final point, the, um, creating and thinking critically, is all about do they, once they've built 
when they're building a model, do they change their mind? Do they think, actually, this would be a better way to do it, a better way to approach things? And that's what we are teaching your children. That's what you are teaching your children at home to do. So you're not giving them the right answers all the time. It's about, have a go. You try, you find out, and that's the way you learn best. So I'm just going to talk a bit about the similarities and differences uh, looking at Atwood Nursery and reception. So some of you might already have children at nursery at our at Atwood and moving into reception. Some of you might be brand new to us. So the similarities are our curriculum is the same both in nursery and reception. Our partnership with parents, which I'll go on to in a bit, is really key. We, ob we observe, as I said, to inform our planning and we do a lot of what we call child-initiated learning, which is where the children take on their own interests and their learning is much more meaningful to them. Outdoor learning is key. We spend a lot of our time outside and I will always say to you and as I say to our staff, please, um, it's not about bad weather, it's about bad clothing. So if it is a cold day, the children will still be going outside, so make sure they're dressed and ready. If it's a wet day, we'll still go out. It doesn't matter if we get wet, but we have all-in-ones on, uh, on, and then we go out, and the children love those days the best, actually. Outdoor learning. Um, staff. So some of our staff do work across both reception and nursery, which is great. And they have that free access, that free flow access from indoors and outdoors. After a certain time, the doors get open and the children have that free flow. And forest school, something which it comes September, October time, I'll, I'll talk to you a bit more about how our forest school works. The obvious differences are the length of the day, so nursery days are shorter. The expectations, so by the end of reception, it's the end of the foundation stage, they, we have to, pr to complete what we call the early years foundation stage profile. And that is different. And there's a new thing that's being introduced this year, um, which is going to be the, called the reception baseline. And we, we will be doing some observations of your children in those initial few days. And I'll talk to the reception parents more about that later. The organisation of the day is slightly different in nursery and reception. There are more structured activities within reception and more time focused learning times. And the duration of these adult focus activities is, is longer. The ratio, we, we have a higher number of adults to, to children within nursery. Um, in reception, there's always one teacher and one TA. And in nursery, we have one teacher and one or two TAs, depending on the day. Some of the resources are obviously different um, in, within nursery and reception, and obviously the space. And nursery, we do try and do some more cooking with the children. But both, both reception and nursery have access to the, the fruit and the milk scheme as well. Parental partnerships. So we assess your children and we make observations using what's something called tapestry, which quite a few of you might already be aware of. And it's what's called our online learning journey. And the way it looks like this, and I will have another meeting, I will record or we hopefully maybe in face to face in September time to explain how it works. But what happens is we make observations of your children by taking photographs, by doing little video recordings, and we make notes. And then we put what areas of learning they meet and then post it onto this online learning platform which you have access to just for your child and you can see the learning that's been going on. You can also comment back to us um, if you for the learning that's been going on. This has been a really useful tool over these past few weeks while we have not been, been able to do face-to-face -face contact teaching with the children because so many parents at home have been uploading the learning that they've been doing and we can still have that that, um, that dialogue with their parents and also with the children. In reception, at the start of the year, we, we I do run some phonic sessions um, to help because it's really important that you are using the same terminology that we are using in school, so we run some of those sessions. Nursery, we also have these we have our home learning packs and these go between school and nursery and you can borrow them like a, le like a learning library for you. That's and each class will have two parent reps, reps. and we use these parent reps and they work alongside us. So if we want, for example, to have a rotor together to get some readers in for reception, or we want a rotor together for nursery to get some parents in to play, with it, to play small group games with the children, we'll speak to our parent reps about that. In reception, um, we have what's called early morning challenges. So once the children are settled, so kind of come uh, November, December time, we invite parents to come in for the first 10-15 minutes of the day, so one parent normally from each class, to work with the children to play certain games and things that actually will be beneficial. And it's a really lovely way for you to engage with other children, engage with your child in the environment and to see the learning that's going on. 
and we also really need support with readers. It's the more people, the, the more times a child can be heard read, whether it's in school or outside of school, the better. And I'll, we'll be running another session like this um, in September time for reception parents, all about how we teach reading and writing within school. Though within your packs that you've got at home, we've got a range of homeschool agreements, so please make sure you read through those and sign and send back the ones that we need. But parental partnerships is really key, and if we get that right, because you are your children's first educators, so you know your children much better than any other member of staff. Home visits. Unfortunately, this year, we are unable to do home visits because of the current situation. So we will not be coming into your, we don't really want to be coming into your homes um, at this time. So what we have decided to do is to have informal meetings, hopefully within September, in sep the start of September, where you can come into school with your child and we can spend time getting to know you as a, as a parent, as a family, and the child can get the idea of the setting themselves. This might all change depending on obviously what the sit current situation is, but at the moment that is what we're hoping to do and these dates will be confirmed. I will, we will email or write to you soon with the confirmation of those dates. It's invaluable because actually we'll provide some information for you. It's a chance for you to get to know us and to ask those questions that you might think, actually I'm not sure about, and it really helps your child with their settling in process as well. It'll be a chance for you to both meet both the teacher and the TA within the classroom. Um, in, your home, in your packs as well, we've provided you all with a small packet of sunflower seeds. With these sunflower seeds our um, friends of Atwood have provided for us and what we would like you to do is over the next few weeks um, before they start back in September is try and plant them and grow them. You can do them inside um, or if you've got a garden you can do them outside and we would love to see the progress that they make and be great for the children to bring back photographs of the sunflowers that they've grown. And nursery you'll have as a chance for you to borrow the home learning packs when you come for your visit as well. So communicating and reporting. Communication is key. The, our school office are fantastic and they will send out lots of emails uh, and you will feel bombarded some days and some weeks, but please make sure you read everything really carefully. Tapestry is a way that we will communicate with you about the weekly learning, but also about um, the observations of what's happening with your child in school. We also love to see the learning that's going on at home, so it's a two-way communication. In reception, we send home what we call home learning letters. So it's a bit like homework, but it's a, an activity each week where we so we can suggest something that you could do with your child to support the learning that's going on in school. We have parent consultation evenings twice a year, um, normally once in the around November time, and then once in March, where it's a chance for you to come and have a more formal 10-minute meeting with your class teacher um, or key worker, and to find out about how your child's getting on. You also get a written report at the end of the year, um, detailing how your, the, ch the progress your child's ma made and maybe the next steps in their learning. There's also a chance, obviously, at the start and the end of the session where you might want to come and talk to us, and it is really important that you do pass on any relevant information. For example, if your child's not slept well the night before, that's really important for us to know because that can make, make, make them more grumpy, it might make them more tired, it might make them lose focus and concentration. So if we know that, we can adapt that. Again, if something's happened at home, maybe a, um, a beloved pet's just died, that will, that will really impact on your child and their learning. So all that information we do need to know. It might be at the start of the day, you come to tell us something and the staff member says, actually, we're really busy at the moment, can you schedule a meeting. That's fine. We will try as much and have that conversation with you straight away, but sometimes it's not always possible and you can always schedule a time to meet with us later. Our website, the Atwood website, is a really key piece of information, so do keep looking on there. Letters get put up on there as well as the learning that's going on, so really use that. Maybe set that as your kind of bookmark of your, um, your, your web browser at home. So what do you need to do before starting in September? We have given you a lot of pa information in your packs we've sent home, so please read the new parents brochure. Please fill in the forms in your pack. There are numerous forms that you need to fill out. Please make sure you fill everyone in, sign where relevant, and then send all that paperwork back to the office as soon as you can. I think we put the date as beginning of July to send it all back to us. We also need photographs. Um, we need two photographs if your child is in nursery, that is for their, for their peg. Um, and for 
um, some, uh, their, their self-registration card. In reception, we need one photograph for their, for their PEG. And it's really important you do get to that to us in July, so that come September, when your child starts, their face, their, their identity will be there. And there's also an all about me sheet, so work with your child to complete that. And there is a chance where you can do it, they can do a drawing. Please encourage your child to do it because it's really important that we can see that progress. So please make sure all that paperwork goes back to the office. Your child's first day in nursery or reception will be, if this is your, especially if this is your oldest or even if this is your youngest and you've been through the system several times, it will be hard. Preparation is key. The night before, have the uniform ready have their shoes ready, does it all fit so you're not rushing around, you're not panicking the date that morning. When you get to the door, bring your children in, of course, bring your children in, get them settled and then try and keep the goodbyes short. They, they might be a bit wobbly, you might be a bit wobbly, um, but the quicker you leave, the quicker they do settle, so please do not worry. Um, and it is important that, is that you help them with that activity. If you are worried and you leave and you think your child's really, really upset, please ring the school office and we will tell you. And we will, if your child is really upset, we will let you know. So please don't worry. And if you feel like you're tearing up, and I've been there when my children started at school, I was very emotional. And I've obviously been on both sides of the door. I had to make sure I went round the corner and cried before that so they didn't see me. They they ran in very happily actually but it is very every child is very different and there are some children that even at the end of reception they're still clinging onto their parents leg but the minute their parent goes they're happy and they have a great day so what do you need to remember in, in september please 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 name any piece of uniform anything that can come off your child because there are 30 or 26 in that nursery jumpers that all look the same so please make sure it's named if you, um, please send in your a PE kit in a drawstring bag, as well as a, a spare pair of uh, in another drawstring bag, some spare clothes. Even if your children are, haven't had an accident for years, those first few weeks within school, they might get engrossed in what they're doing and forget to go. Things are different, so there is often children do have accidents where they might not have done before, and it's much nicer, and they much prefer if they can come use their own um, things rather than our spare clothes. Session timings. Please look out for those. We will. They are to be. We are going to be confirmed based on the situation at the moment. We don't know how the start date will look, but we will let you know as soon as we can. Call milk. Your child, if you're on, if they're under five, will automatically be signed up for milk. But otherwise, look in the pack for information if your child does turn five right at the start on how to get access to milk. A school book bag. Every child will need a school book bag, and in your pack explains how to get onto the Maypack website and how to order that, as well as all their uniform. Remember that 50% at least will be spent learning outdoors. So make sure when it is hot and sunny, you put sun cream on them. Make sure they have a named hat. In the winter time, make sure they have the right appropriate clothing. We're also going to be asking your child to complete what's called a chatterbox. So it's a little shoe box um, which they cover and with some things in from home that they can talk about when their first few days. It's like a show and tell and it really does open up the children and it gets us to know a bit about them as well. So please bring that when they come in in September as well. Hopefully, this has been uh, this session over this talk. You've learnt a little bit more about the earliest foundation stage. You know a little bit more about how we assess your children. We've stressed the importance of you as parents, as the first educators, but that parental partnership is so important with you and with us. And um, provide you a little bit of information about your child's first days at school. There is so much information I could give you, and so much more I could tell you. But I think I'm trying to keep this as, as short as I can. We will be in contact soon with additional information and any key dates and I'm sorry that we can't give it to you now but we don't want to give you dates now and then for them to change so we're waiting until we definitely know for sure. But in the meantime please feel free to contact the school office by email or by phone if you've got any questions and we will try to help you as best we can. Thank you again um, for listening and hopefully you can go back through this, um, this video and go back to information that you might need. And again, just look through your pack, spend some time and look out for some more videos where we're going to be videoing the classrooms so you can show them with your children and we're going to show them the key members of staff that they're going to meet. So hopefully that tra this transition process will be easier for everyone. Thank you again. So, hello everybody. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I know there has been a lot of important information that Kate, I know, has given you through 
her presentation and it is such a different way of starting for your children. We totally and utterly understand that there's an awful lot of information to take on board and how strange it will be uh, the transition into either nursery or reception but uh, we wanted to put your mind at rest that we'll do absolutely everything that we can to make sure that everything works out. So Kate, what are your kind of closing thoughts on that? I think uh, ending here in our in our forest school area kind of just shows the kind of the environment your children are going to have and the fun they're going to have in those first few weeks and years to come at, at Atwood. Um, look out for the next over the next few weeks for any more information we send out about the starting date and the transition and how it works. And we're going to make it. We're going to work with you to make it as smooth and pain free as possible and fun for your children as they start. And we look forward to seeing you all in person very soon. Absolutely, and, and generally I don't fall off logs, so I wanted to, you know, <laughs> end, end with that thought, which uh, hopefully will make you smile, but um, it's absolutely wonderful.